First, let me apologize for my voice. I had had uh, a strain on my voice for the past two days, but I was so determined to be here today that I said, even if I could only whisper, I would come here and attend this event. And I'll let you know the reason. Sometime last year, the EFCC chairman, while sharing one of his very many ideas on anti-corruption strategies with me, told me about the plan for integrity clubs in schools across the nation. And I told him my own journey in advocacy for integrity in Nigeria how in 1995, I co-founded an organization called Integrity. And it has now morphed into an organization called Convention for Business Integrity, and it's here in Abuja. But that was 1995. I co-founded it with Mr. Soji Pampa. And one of the programs of that organization was the establishment of integrity clubs in schools. That was in 1995, but we never quite achieved it. This is why I feel such a deep commitment and attachment to this project. And I'm particularly pleased that I'm able to witness the launch of the Operations Manual for Integrity and Zero Tolerance, uh, for Integrity and Zero Tolerance Clubs in our schools. I'm happy that with the dynamism of the EFCC chairman and his team, they are able to realize a dream that some of us had so many years ago, but somehow were not able to achieve. I think it's a vital step in finally achieving the milestone in building a future against the disaster of corruption. And I want you to take note of those words, the disaster of corruption. And the conceptualization of the manual deserves commendation, and the establishment of the clubs in schools is also timely. Because the truth is that perhaps the greatest challenge that we face today as a nation and as a people is how to safeguard our young people and the coming generations from the ethical crisis and confusion that is confronting our nation. The false notion, and that I, I describe it as an ethical crisis and confusion, because there is confusion about what exactly corruption means and what and how it plays out in the lives of people and a nation. There's a false notion that we can get away and get ahead by cheating or stealing, whether in public or private life. And I want you to take note that I say that it's a false notion. The error of thinking that there will be no consequence for defrauding others, whether it is your employers or whether it is government or whether it is cheating in an exam. It's an error to think that there will be no consequence. The reason why many people believe these false notions is that there seems to be many in our society whose wealth cannot be explained. And many, even amongst young people, who live by defrauding others. So we hear of the Yahoo Yahoo explosion. Several have been convicted by uh, the EFCCs, uh, by the EFCC on several locations, several of these individuals. And many people who say that young people today rarely find role models amongst professionals, or even amongst uh, public servants who are able to explain how they made their wealth. These are all symptoms of the crisis that we're experiencing. Let me say why, I, I, why it is an error to think that corruption pays. It's a mistake because many societies in the world were well, like us, where we are today. There's nothing peculiar about Nigeria or peculiar about Nigeria's corruption. We like to sound as if there's something about us. 
But there's nothing peculiar. Many, many societies have been where we were. They were extremely corrupt, cheating in examinations, public servants stealing resources, extorting from uh, people. You want to get a passport, you have to go and hire a consultant. You want to get a driver's license, you must pay a bribe. All manner of things. Shop assistant working in a shop must steal the, the inventory of the shop owner. All of these things are not new. They are all they, 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 they are all the features of a society that begins by believing that it is possible for individuals to enrich themselves by deceit, and then everything will be all right. But very soon, societies, they suddenly discover that is not possible, that eventually the society will collapse, that eventually even those who have stolen the resources of society would have to be accountable, will have to be accountable for it. What these societies did was to take an all of society approach to fighting corruption and fighting dishonesty. And this is why this particular exercise, these integrity clubs are very important, but I'll come to that in a moment. The other fact is that many who think and in those societies, many people thought, we will get away with this corruption. They are often surprised that the long arm of the law, sometimes very, very slow, eventually will catch up with the criminal. There is no time bar or statute of limitation against the commission of a crime. A man who steals this year can be arrested in 10 years' time for his crimes. So when you steal, you cannot sleep with both eyes closed. Every knock at the door will get you worried. I remember a, a, a young uh, lady in a university in the southwest of Nigeria. She was in year five of a medical, medical degree program. When it was discovered that she had used for a false certificate for entering the university. The university had done an audit and discovered so many. But this particular lady was very pathetic because she had passed the exams all the way to year five when it was discovered that she had used a false certificate. The decision that had to be taken, of course, is that she had to begin afresh she could no longer, despite the five years she had spent, it could not stand. Even if she had received a degree, if fundamentally the, 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 the basis for that degree is wrong, that's the end of it. And one day, it will be discovered. Which is why I think that it is important for us to realize that integrity pays, and we must let young people, and all of you young people must understand that. The recognition that honesty, trustworthiness are crucial individual and collective attributes for successful people and communities is fundamental. Every corrupt act is not just a crime. It's a crime against society. It's not just something that helps an individual. It's a crime against society. And every one of us must realize that every time we permit somebody around us to commit a crime and get away with it. Eventually, it catches up with all of us as a society. I'll tell you a very quick story. I was a student uh, in England uh, in 1981. I'd left, and at that time, you know, I was uh, doing postgraduate work in the United Kingdom. And at that time, all you needed to do was, I mean, well, it was difficult. Let me just cut a long story short. Difficult to send your money abroad for your fees. You had to go through a long process, central bank, etc., etc. Anyway, in the university where I was, I couldn't pay my fees in a particular term because my fees had not come from Nigeria. It was taking a long time. 
So I went to a counselor in the university and asked what help I could get because I had to defer the fees and all of that. And the counselor said, why don't I just go to the bank? I said, bank? Can I go to the bank? She said, yes. I should go to the bank and ask for a loan. I said, but I don't have any money. How can I go to I don't have any collateral. How do I go to a bank? She said, no, I should go up there and ask. So I went to the bank, the NatWest Bank then in, in, in England. And as I went to this bank, I saw a lady across the counter. And I asked her, I explained my situation to her. I was expecting my check. This was a bank where I had an account. And I explained to her that I was expecting my check. I didn't know when. It could be up to six weeks or seven weeks. I wasn't sure. She looked at the ledger, my ledger. I saw that I had a little money, maybe about 100 pounds or something. And she said, OK, how much do you need? I said, 600 pounds. And she went. I was still standing at the counter and brought the 600 pounds with a note paper which I signed to say that when my check came, it will come to the bank. So I took away 600 pounds across the counter. I did not sit down anywhere. I did not beg. I just simply explained, and that was 1981. By 1984, of course, when my check came, I paid back. By 1984, it was impossible for a Nigerian to open a bank account in most banks in England by 1984. I'm not saying borrow money. I'm saying open a bank account. As soon as they see your green passport, say, no, 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 no. Can't open a bank account here. Why? Because many students, and many, had used credit cards in, those, in, in, the, in the banks where they, 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 they had their accounts. When they were going home, they would buy cars, buy fridges, buy all sorts of things with their credit cards and disappear, and they would never pay back. It was a Nigerian thing. Many people knew that it was going on. Of course, nobody, com nobody said anything. Nobody checked, nobody did anything. So it was impossible. Years after, it was still very difficult for Nigerians to open accounts. See, other countries, nationals, opened accounts easily. They didn't mind. But when they saw your passport, they said, no, 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 we don't. So whatever offer, and I'm not talking about loans. So at a point, it was possible for you to borrow money across the counter. In another few years, you can't even open an account. So whatever act of corruption a person does, whatever act of dishonesty, it always has an impact on the future for others, even in the present for other people. It's not just about yourself. Today, when you hear Yahoo, 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 people say, ah, you know, there are people who even justify it. You read some people who just probably say, oh, yes, uh, it's because they don't have money. Oh, it's because they are poor. That's why they're Yahoo Yahoo. No, that's not true. There are many, many poor people all over, young people all over the world in different countries. The difference is consequence. If you know that you will be caught and dealt with, you will not do it. And you must also recognize that it destroys the reputation of your country. And that reputation is important because you want to go abroad to study. You want to, do, you want to do business abroad. You want to do business with people. If the only thing people have ever heard is that, ah, these people are 419. They do 419. They do your own. If that's the only reputation that there is, then you're in trouble. So I want to say to the young people here in particular, that you represent the army that must fight corruption, not because somebody has preached to you or because it seems like a nice thing to do, no. Because your future depends on it. The reputation of your country is all that you will have in the next few years. You want to do business, you want to, whatever you want to do, you want to go abroad, you want to, whatever. It is that reputation. 
and those who destroy the reputation of your country are not doing you good. They are doing you great evil. And you must ensure that you join the army to fight corruption, to fight dishonesty, because it simply is dangerous, not just, not just for you, but for your, the entire society and for the future. Every public officer who steals robs the Nigerian society of funds for health care, for education, etc. Every time a public officer steals money, whether the man is from your tribe or from your village or not, because people excuse stealing when it comes from their own part of the, the, the world. They say, oh, it's OK. After all, it's my, it's my brother, it's my sister. But never forget that everybody, every public officer who steals resources makes it more difficult for you to access good education, to access good health care, good roads, and all of that. Because public money is not for private pockets. It is meant for the public good. It's meant for public infrastructure. So everybody who is pocketing public resources does harm to our country and does harm to the future and to all of the young people in our country. So our integrity clubs must become policemen against corruption and wrongdoing. Whether it is a member of government or a shop assistant who is your friend or in your own class, you must fight against cheating because cheating destroys not just individuals, it destroys societies. And ultimately, it will affect you whether you realize it now or not. So let me again commend the visionary chairman of the EFCC, uh, Mr. Abdul Rashid Bawa, for this great initiative, and also for realizing that we must develop an anti-corruption army. That army is waiting in our schools, and that we must teach them that corruption is the worst destroyer of destinies and people, and that they must fight it as one fights a mortal enemy in a war. So I want to thank you all, but I want, to ensure, I want you to ensure that individually and collectively let us support this effort. And I'm so happy that we have chosen a school, not uh, the ICC, I, and, 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 and I think uh, I join others in commending the AFCC chairman for choosing a school, not ICC or Transport Hilton. Because this is truly where that war must begin. Thank you all very much.